All right, so for this demo, I'm going to be uh, doing a little uh, modeling exercise, and then we'll take it to the next level with uh, texturing and whatnot later on. But uh, the object that we're going to model is the iPhone. I'm going to show you how to set up um, a little reference for yourself so that you know um, so that you know what to what to do. Uh, you're going to eyeball it a little bit more accurately. Okay, so what I could do is I could just you know throw a plane in here and then throw the image on it. But what it's going to do is it's going to distort if I do that. And so what I'm going to do actually is go to keyboard entry and I know that, I actually set this up ahead of time, the length of my plane is 600 pixels and the width is 498 pixels. I know that from looking at the images uh, properties. Okay, And so when I go back to Max I can actually type that in here and hit keyboard entry and create and what that'll do is it'll create an image for me. Um, it doesn't have to be this big but it, since it is uh, it'll create an image for me that uh, won't distort. So I'll bring up my materials editor. Uh, just a standard shader will do. I'm going to change the diffuse color to bitmap. And I'm actually going to go into, I've got my project set to something else. I'll just go back into iPhone add, which is what I'm creating. Uh, render scene assets. There we go. Images. And there's my specs. Okay. And what I'm going to do down here. Let's right click, right click here, assign material to selection, and right click again, show shaded material in viewport. All right, and what I actually have now is something that's distorted, exactly the opposite of what I wanted. So I'll click on the object and go to my modify, and I'll switch these around. It's 498 by 600. Now I've got something that looks a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to need is I'll get rid of the materials editor. This is just setting up the scene, okay? And so what I'm also going to need is if I look at from the um, from the left view, all right? It doesn't do me a whole lot of good. So um, what I need is a couple different scenes or a couple different uh, angles. One of them is going to be this top view, and the other one's going to be a side view. And so what I'm going to do is take this plane, and I'm going to hit Control V. And it's going to give me the opportunity to either copy or instance. I'm going to make a copy. All right. And we'll just rotate it exactly 90 degrees down there. Okay. And now I can move it from my left view. Yeah, left view isn't showing up, so I'll go back to perspective here. There it is. All right. And actually, I'll need to go to right view to get that to work. So I'll go to perspective, and I'll select right. There it is. It doesn't have a hotkey, but what I can do now is make sure that this is lining up right to the bottom there. OK. Back to perspective, and here we go. We've got it. I'm actually going to move this over as well, because I don't want that in my way. All right, so now I've got a couple different reference planes. Now these planes are going to get in the way if I try to select them. So I'm going to bring them into my Manage Layers. I'm going to create a new layer. And it's going to automatically have those in it. I'm going to freeze that layer. I'm going to right click, go to Layer Properties, and uncheck fro Show Frozen in Gray. I actually have to do that for each one underneath as well. Object Properties, Show Frozen in Gray. Get rid of that. Okay, you won't see it until you actually hit it. So there you go. So now this is frozen or locked. It's like locking a layer in Photoshop. And you can get rid of it that way. 